Hello and welcome back. My name is Julie and today I have been doing live streams in five small segments talking about the basics of stamping and crafting. We just finished our 130 segment on the basics of tools. If you missed any of these, I will be definitely posting the replays also on my YouTube channel so that you can find those and watch the ones that you missed. We'd had the basics of stamps, papers, inks, tools, and now we're gonna be talking about the basic stamping techniques. This is going to be, um, just a minute, your sound is gonna get better here in a second. There we go. I was resetting from the 1.30. Now that we got the two o'clock started, I think that that is going to sound better for you. All right, um, so again, we've been talking about the basics, which hopefully is helpful if you are brand new to stamping, paper crafting, um, crafting of any sort. And this fifth segment that I'm gonna be sharing with you now is really on the basic techniques of stamping. And so even if you've been around for a little while, you might learn something new. And I'm sure if you are a beginner, you're going to gain a lot of information from this short and easy segment. All right, I am just double checking my monitor to make sure that we are live and doing what we need to do. Okay, so let me mention a couple things as people may be joining us. I mention this in each segment, but in case this is the only one you caught, I wanna make sure that you are caught up on all the news. So if from watching these videos or at any time in the future, or perhaps you caught one of my YouTube videos, if you're interested in purchasing product from my online store, this is the site to do that. When you get to the checkout portion of your online order, I invite you to type in a host code. You'll type it into the box and then you hit apply. The current host code right now is this one and this is good through the end of June. So June 30th of 2023. When this expires, there will be a new host code and you can always find whatever the current host code is here at my website and blog, stampwithjuliebaum.com. There are articles and videos and lots of information, but you can um, find a host code there if you are in need of that. And then also I want to invite anyone to a an opportunity on a Thursday. We're doing mystery stamping. Now this is via Zoom. So even if you're not local, um, you're able to join in and make the mystery project, whatever card we're making, um, along with us via Zoom. It is a free event, but I need to know that you're going to participate so that I can send you the link to that Zoom meeting. So I also will want to send you the clues for that event. So if you're interested in participating, and I already have some people both local and out of state who are gonna be participating in their own time zones, we'll be stamping here in California at 5.30 Pacific time. And um, those in other states are just going to maybe stay up a little bit later and stamp along with us. It'll only be about one hour. I would love to have you. So please contact me. If you don't already have my information to text or email me, you can find contact information here at stampwithjuliebaum.com. That way I can send you the link and the clues. Let's jump into our stamping techniques. The first thing we're going to talk about is the most basic stamping technique, and I call that a coloring book technique. So to stamp with the coloring, coloring book technique, um, you really only need a couple of simple things to get started. So I'm showing you the Taco Fiesta stamp set. This lends itself quite well to what we're discussing because as you can see, they are images that you would stamp in maybe black ink as I'm going to do, and it's the outline of the image. So let's do a coloring book technique. I'm gonna pull out this little pinata stamp from this set. And we're going to mount it onto an acrylic block. 
And we've talked about all of these parts and pieces in the segments earlier today. So I'm gonna lay my photopolymer stamp down with the flat side up and attach it to my acrylic block. So to do the coloring book technique, you need a stamp or a stamp set that is an outline of the images. So as you can see, it's the outline of a taco, the outline of a burrito, cactus, sombrero, I am showing you with the pinata. Then I'm just going to use a black ink pad. So this is about as simple as it is to get started with stamping. This is SIP, S-I-P, so it's stamps, ink, and paper. These are truly the basics. So I'm going to stamp my pinata <clears throat> onto my white cardstock. So I'm tapping the stamp around and kind of walking it around my black ink pad to, to pick up the black ink. I'm going to put a stamp and pierce mat underneath my cardstock, which we talked about in an earlier segment when we were talking about tools. And now I'm just going to stamp my little pinata onto the cardstock. All right, we're talking about basic techniques. So now I'm able to show you a coloring book technique. Now I have my image and it looks like a coloring book page. And we're going to add our color by coloring it in. Now you can do this part, the coloring in, with whatever you have. You can use colored pencils, you can use markers that you might already own, um, you can use your kids markers if that's all that you can grab. Whatever method you want to color this in, I'm going to show you stamp and blend markers which are super fun to use. But again, the basic technique is stamp, ink, a black ink pad, paper and get your image onto the paper and then we're going to color. So at this point I can grab some markers and just do some coloring. This is exactly like you would do when you were a child or as an adult when you do those um, coloring books or coloring pages. This is probably the most economical way to start stamping as well, is to just start with a black ink pad, a set of stamps, and use whatever coloring things you already have. So you, I'm not gonna color this whole image, but I just want to give you the idea of how coloring book technique works. So I stamped my image, and now, just like with a coloring book, you would color in the little parts. All right then, aside from the coloring book method, we're going to move on and we're gonna talk about colored ink pads instead. But let's make sure that you are good and clear with a coloring book technique stamp your image in black. It is only the outline of the image and then you're going to color in with whatever coloring medium, medium you would like to use. All right, so the next technique then is stamping with colored ink. So instead of the black ink pad, I'm going to get a couple of colored ink pads out and I'll show you a different type of stamp set. This one is called Oceanfront, and you can see it's elements of nature. I've got my different little grasses and my reeds, my rocks. These images can be sky or water or canyons, but what I want to show you is how you're going to get the stamped images from colored ink pads. You'll also notice that this is not an outline or a coloring book type of stamp. The first one that I showed you is the outline of images. This is just the full image. There is no outline, it is the image. So let's stamp one or two of these so you can see the difference. Now I'm gonna be stamping on my cardstock. And the first thing I'm gonna do is stamp this little 
image that is kind of like these maybe cattails or little reeds. So I'm grabbing a pumpkin or a pecan pie ink pad. This is a lovely brown. I'm going to pick up the ink onto the stamp and once this is stamped onto my cardstock, that's it. So you are starting to get the idea. This isn't a black outline image that now I have to color in. It is already being stamped in the color. You can also stamp a second time without getting more ink to get a lighter version, which is very effective. Your lights and your dark. All right, let's do another stamp from this one. Let's do this image. And we'll do it in a green. How about Mossy Meadow? Picking up my Mossy Meadow ink and then stamping onto the cardstock. You can see that I have lovely green stems. There's nothing to go back and have to color like there was in a coloring book technique. All of the color comes from the ink pad itself. Let's do one more. We'll do the little rocks and let's grab a gray. I have gray granite here. Now I'm not really designing a card front as you can tell. We're just using this scrap piece of cardstock. Um, again, we're talking about techniques. Now, the other four segments that I did live streams on today um, were, were quite short, some of them only 20 minutes or less. And um, today, this segment, this fifth segment in the series, is a little bit longer because we're actually doing some stamping and talking about technique. Thank you so much for being here and joining in the fun. Okay, I'm going to take a new ink color. This one is called Pebbled Path. And let's do our little, or our large rocks here. Like so. And we could do them a lighter version without re-inking. I can stamp this a second time and get a lighter color of those rocks. All right, so we've covered two basic stamping techniques. The first one is coloring book, where you're gonna stamp an outline image, probably in black, maybe in gray, and then you're going to color with your choice of coloring medium. The next kind is just stamping with colored ink pads, and this needs to be not an outline image. These need to be solid images that accept the color from the ink pad that you chose. Okay, let's move on now that you've got those basics. We're going to move on to what is called two-step stamping. Um, I am cleaning my stamps on my Simply Chamois, which we talked about earlier today when we talked about the basics of stamps and how to clean them. And if you missed those segments, you can certainly watch the replays. All right. Two-step stamping works very much like this that we just did, okay? The stamping with colored ink pads. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to use some colored ink pads. But often, a stamp set will be designated as a two-step stamp set. It says it right here on the stamp case. You can see that. It says two-step. And this is how that works. These images are actually designed to work together to build your stamped image. So in the first example, we'll use these small flowers and then we'll use these larger flowers. This also brings up a really good point that we did not talk about earlier with photopolymer stamps and especially some of the pinks um, that will actually stain the stamps 
These are clean, there is not ink on them, but they have been stained from some of the red ink that I was using. It doesn't affect the use of them at all. It's just the nature of the photopolymer that certain ink colors will tend to stain them. So don't let that bother you or slow you down at all. All right, so I'm going to attach these images to the blocks. Now, each one is a set of three flowers. But what I'm going to show you is we have the outline of the flowers and we have the flower shapes themselves or the inside part. And let me show you how fun this is to do two-step stamping. So I'm going to choose a color. I think I'll start with um, Moody Mauve. The first thing that I'm going to do is stamp the outline of these three flowers with my Moody Mauve. So I'm picking up the ink by tapping around the ink pad, check to see if I have nice coverage, and stamp onto my cardstock. There's the outline of the flower. Now, what I'm gonna do is use the same color, and I'm gonna show you a couple of options, so just stick with me, this is option number one. I'm gonna pick up my ink with Moody Mauve, again, the same color. This time I'm going to stamp some of that ink off just onto a scrap piece of paper. And then onto my flowers. Now I can look through the stamp. I don't wanna get my head in your shot, so give me just a second to line this up. I can look through the flower to line up my petals. I don't think I'm doing it only because I don't wanna get my head in your way, but we're gonna move on, so it won't be a problem. And this is quite funny because I'm having an Amazon delivery right now. If he rings the bell, my dogs are going to bark. Okay, he didn't, so we're gonna be okay. All right, and you can see that what happens is on the inside of the petals, now I have filled in some color. Let's do this again with a second option. Okay, that was using one ink pad color and doing the outline first, using the same color stamped off for the inside. Let's see what happens when we combine two colors of ink instead. So this time I'm going to use Night of Navy and Balmy Blue. So I have a darker blue and a lighter blue. And let's use the large flowers this time. So I'm going to stamp the outline in Night of Navy ink. Like so. Then the inside of the flowers they're designed to line up very nicely. It doesn't have to be perfect. After all, it is a hand-created creation, but they are designed to line up very nicely. And this time, I'm going to use the lighter blue. This is Balmy Blue. Pick up the ink on the stamp, and then line these up. And again, forgive me if it's not quite as lined up as I would like it to be. I don't want to get my head in here um, into your camera view, but you can line it up, stamp that image, and now you've got a gorgeous two-toned set of three flowers. Oh, two-step stamping is my absolute favorite. The way that the images work together to create your final image is just spectacular. All right, let's do... Um, one more. Let me show you how it works with a leaf. The stamps that I'm using right now are called Petal Park. There is a coordinating punch that we looked at earlier in one of our segments. This is the Petal Park punch. Is that what it's called? And um, I am going to show you how these images would look punched out in just a moment. Okay, so for the leaf, let's go back since we're trying to keep it simple. Let's go back and use only one color of green, even though we're gonna stamp it twice. 
and this time I'm going to show it to you with um, old olive. So the first thing that I want to do is stamp the outline image of my leaf with my old olive ink and I'm going to do a couple of them. so that you have a chance to see what we're building here. And then the image that matches, that coordinates with it, this is the inside part of the flower, or of the leaf, excuse me. This time I'm gonna pick up the same color ink, but I want it a lighter green. I don't want it that same intensity. So I'm just gonna stamp it on a piece of scratch paper. These are just little pieces of copy paper, especially if I've printed something and I'm either done with it or it was a mistake. I save all that um, printer paper and then just chop it up into little scratch pieces. Now I can line up my leaf and put the inside in there and I've got that beautiful lighter green color that finishes the look of the leaf. And this particular leaf has a really pretty highlight by design left right in the center of the leaf. Very artistic looking. So there we have our two-step flowers and leaves. Now, let me cut this out a teeny bit. I gotta cut it down, it's too big. Um, this piece of paper is too big to use with the punch easily. So I'm gonna just kind of trim this out of here to show you how I'm able to use the punch. All right, so I'm gonna unlock my punch as we discussed in an earlier segment today. I can take these flowers, slide them right down into the punch, and I can line them up I'm looking at all three of them and looking at the edges just to see if it's pretty much centered around my flowers. And then squeeze the punch so that the images will be punched out. And I have three lovely little flower images that I can use as accents on a card. So sticking to our techniques, we've covered the coloring book technique, black ink, an outline stamp and then color it in with your own choice of coloring medium. Stamping with colored ink so that you get these lovely types of images where all of the color comes right from the ink pad. And then of course the two-step stamping where you use a two-step stamp set that is designed for building images, stamping one image on top of the other. And that can be created with multiple colors of ink pad or one color of ink pad stamped off to make the second image a little bit lighter. All right, let's move on to an entirely different but still basic technique, and that is using embossing folders. So an embossing folder is used in conjunction with our stamp and cut and emboss machine. So right now I've selected to show you this technique with the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. So this is also sometimes known as dry embossing. So we're not using ink and powder. That is heat embossing and we'll cover that in just a minute. But this is dry embossing where the texture from this plate itself is actually going to get embedded into our paper or our cardstock. So this is just a scrap piece of cardstock that I'm using to show it to you, but you would just lay it inside the embossing folder. And of course there is a variety of different designs of embossing folder. Then we're going to need our stamp and cut and emboss machine. So I'm gonna bring this hefty guy in here. Now we talked a little bit about this machine in our segment earlier, our 130 segment when we talked about tools, but we didn't actually um, use it to, to create anything. So I'm gonna show you that now. When you're using your embossing folder, you're going to create layers with your, um, with your plates. 
So to use an embossing folder, I'm going to start with a plate number one. I'm not going to use a plate number two at all. I'm going to take a plate three next. Then my embossing folder with the cardstock already placed inside, that is next. And you might notice that I'm putting it in hinge side first, not the free edge. Okay, you always want to put your embossing folders in with the hinge side first. Cover that with a second plate number three. And then this is going to get rolled through the stamping cut and emboss machine. Now, because we're limited on space, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I'm going to take apart my layers here. And then I can show you that really delightful imprint that this has left on the cardstock. Can you see that yummy texture? It's just beautiful. This can create quite an elegant look depending on what card or creation you're working on. So this is a basic um, technique is knowing how to use an embossing folder. So I did want to cover that. Let's talk for just a moment about heat embossing. So for heat embossing, we need a couple of products. We need a Versamark ink pad. Now a white um, ink pad with the, um, the embossing type of ink in it um, that we talked about earlier, that can be used as well. But for the basics, we're gonna talk about the Versamark ink pad. So I've got my ink pad. I need a stamp to show this image. So let's do, I'm gonna grab a word stamp. I think it's gonna show it best. I was gonna use this leaf, but let's use a word. All right, here's one here in our Taco Fiesta stamp set. So this says, you spice up my life. Then we need an embossing powder. And in the catalog, there are a couple of options, but there's some just basic color embossing powders. So I'm gonna be using a white powder. I'm showing you this example, even though you could do it in a many, many different ways and different colors. I'm gonna show it to you on black cardstock with white powder, because it will stand out quite well and you'll be able to see the steps. All right, so I've got my ink, my embossing powder, the cardstock that I'm gonna be stamping on, and my stamp, which I need to get it onto a block. All right, now there is an accessory um, tool pack in the catalog for embossing that is a great purchase and it's a great thing to use. I have been embossing, heat embossing for so long, um, the little accessory package has kind of come and gone at different times. So I tend to teach the heat embossing without that accessory. I think it's a great thing, but um, it isn't 100% necessary. So I'm just gonna show you how instead, I use another one of those little scrap pieces of paper. All right, that's gonna come in handy in just a moment. And then the last piece is you need a heat source. The heat source, um, I recommend is of course a heat tool. Mine is quite old. This is an old one. The new ones have been updated, but this is a workhorse. It's working just great. A heat tool is what you need to cause your ink and your powder to melt together to create the stamped image that you're looking for. Now, even though it sounds um, like a hair dryer, you'll see when I turn it on, it sounds like a blow dryer. A blow dryer does not get hot enough. So you really do, for this technique, need to invest in a heat tool. 
All right. One other little part that comes with that accessory pack that I mentioned is, is really essential and that is an embossing buddy. And it's like a little sack with some special little material in here. What this does is it causes um, there to not be any cling on your cardstock. It's like, uh, you could liken it to a bounce sheet that removes cling from your laundry as it's drying. This is going to remove cling from your cardstock so that you don't have little parts of your powder that are sticking where maybe you don't want it to stick. Um, that said, I have heard that you might have luck rubbing a bounce sheet onto your cardstock before stamping if you don't have an embossing buddy. Um, but I, I know that it doesn't work quite as well, but you, again, you might be able to limp along if you are new to crafting and you haven't invested in the little accessory pack that includes the embossing buddy. All right, so remove the cling from your cardstock. You're gonna stamp the image with your Versamark ink. And we talked earlier in our ink segment that this is basically a colorless or an invisible ink. I'm gonna leave space on here to do it twice in case we need to. So you're gonna stamp your ink onto your cardstock. Now it will show up a little bit on the black, which is why I wanted to do this example for you on black cardstock. See if in the angle of light you can kind of see it. While that ink is wet, I'm going to put my white powder. And again, there's clear powder, there's black powder. There's different ways to do this. We are only covering the basics. So Versamark and a white powder is what I recommend to start. Now you can see that I was generous with my pour and then all of the extra is either going to go into your little folded scrap paper or into the accessory tray that is an option. I'm going to give it a little flick just to remove some of that extra that was um, still clinging to the cardstock. Now, if I had not used an embossing buddy, the cling would have been much more difficult to get off. All of that extra powder would have really hung on to the paper. In the event that you have a few extra little um, bits, you can either lightly brush those away, or if you have an old, if you have an old paintbrush handy, I'm reaching for mine now, um, that can come in handy as well, just to sweep those away. Otherwise, they're gonna look like white dots when you finish this process. All right, so we've cleaned that up nicely. The next thing I encourage you to do is either move that accessory tray that has the powder in it way out of the way, or better yet, get that powder back into the jar and close the lid. That way when you're doing your heating, you don't accidentally blow embossing powder all over your work surface. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on. You'll hear it warm. Uh, you'll hear it turn on and it does get warm. Within a couple of seconds, it gets very hot, like too hot to hold your hand in front of. I wanted to stop there in the middle as I showed you when it was still partially powdery looking and partially melted. You can tell and you know when to stop with your heat source as soon as all of that ink and powder has melted together and now it looks raised and shiny. It's not powdery looking anymore. All right, so this is your basic heat embossing. Versamark. Um, an embossing powder. We used white today. Of course, your cardstock and your stamp, and then a heat source to cause that special ink and powder to melt together. And then this has a lovely raised finish, and it does indeed look shiny. 
All right, that's the basics of heat embossing. It's kind of like doing magic. It really is a fun, fun process and technique to get to play with. All right, the last thing that we're gonna talk about in our basic technique section is masking. I am going to show you two optional ways to do your masking. One involves just some post-it pads that you probably might have in your office or in your stamp space. So I've got post -it, a post-it pad. And the other is with our Stampin' Up! masking paper, which I really do prefer, but you can very easily do this method um, with a post-it if you don't have the masking paper. But if you're making a list of things that you would like to have in your stash of crafting, I would definitely include masking paper on that short list. Okay, <laughs> or a long list. All right, I am going to, um, since this is handy, I'm gonna show you this technique with Um, I think with this little cactus image, I mean, I could use any of them, the burrito, the taco, let's just use the cactus for now. All right. The reason that you might want to know how to do masking, this comes in very handy when you want multiple images, but you kind of want them either grouped together, one slightly behind or in front of another. Perhaps you want multiple images in a line slightly overlapping each other. This is the way to get that. So I've got my cactus. Let's bring in my scrap of cardstock since we're doing all of our demos on this scrap. Okay, we'll use this one. This will be a, this will make a good example. Okay, so I'm just going to show this to you with my stamp um, and a black ink pad. All right, it's not hard. It's just a step-by-step -step process. Once you've seen it and done it, you get the aha moment and you'll totally understand. So I'm going to stamp my first cactus here on the paper. Now, if I want another cactus just slightly behind this one, I can't really stamp it now because I'm going to get ink in this image. You follow. So what you're going to do is stamp that same image either onto a post-it note, and you will want to do this stamping up here where it's sticky, not necessarily down here. All right, so I'm gonna stamp this way high on my post-it, like so. Now, the same would be true if I was using my masking paper. The masking paper, believe it or not, is even a little bit thinner than a post-it, and so it can um, be really nice to use. All right, so you don't have to do both. You can either do it on the post-it or on masking paper. Now, I'm going to take my paper snips and cut that image out, okay? This is still the image on our card. This is the project we're working on. This is the steps to the process that we're trying to do. So, with my paper snips or my super sharp scissors, I wanna cut this image out and I want it really, really close to the black line. All right, so in this instance, you're not trying to leave kind of a halo around it. You really want to cut very, very close to the image, to that black line. All right, we've got that first little arm. and up the other side. Now the good news is you can reuse a mask over and over again. So if I was going to make six cards 
with this cactus design that I'm imagining, I only need to cut one cactus mask. Okay, you don't have to do this every single time. You can reuse a mask over and over, basically until the stickiness of your post-it has run out. And even then there's ways to still kind of temporarily stick it in place and use it again. Had I thought a teeny bit ahead, I would have pre-cut this, but I do think it's good for you to see the process. It would be easier than me just telling you about it. Okay, I'm gonna trim that top of this a little bit closer. Okay, there's my cactus mask. Okay, now, like we talked about on the, um, on the heat embossing, I feel like this is kind of magical too. So at this point, I'm gonna take my mask, cover my cactus that I already stamped. Remember, this is my pretend card front. Now I can ink up the cactus stamp and stamp again, just slightly over and behind this guy. Now that extra ink has all gone onto my mask. Let's do a third image, leaving the mask in place. Let's come over here and do another one. And now the magic. When you remove your little paper mask, you have effectively created a group of three cactuses, one behind the other. Totally amazing. It's a really cool and very easy technique to know how to do. Now, if I was using my emboss, uh, my masking paper, I would do the same thing. Instead of on the post-it, I would cut this out. Now, the nice thing about the masking paper is the whole thing is sticky, like a post-it. So like on this one, I only used the very top of the post-it. Essentially, this is all now waste and then only this top part is sticky. See this part down here is not sticky. The masking paper is sticky throughout and it's very, very thin. So when you use this as a mask, you get to stamp on you know, the other side of it or whatever, remove the mask and you have really um, essentially no halo, which I didn't get any kind of a weird halo from my post-it either. They both are acceptable. They're both great ways to do masking. Again, the masking paper is just a little bit nicer a little bit thinner and it's nice that the whole mask would be sticky. So that is a basic um, technique of how to do masking, which I think you'll find comes in really handy on certain projects and certain looks that you are trying to accomplish. So that concludes our five segments today of all of the basics. If you only watched one or two of the segments, I do invite you to either here on my Facebook page or on my YouTube channel, go and find those other ones. Perhaps there's a thing or two new that you can learn by watching my basic videos. And I want to remind you about mystery stamping coming up on Thursday night. Be sure and contact me if you want the link so that you can join us. I always bring lots of fun and interesting things to you either here on Facebook or especially on my YouTube channel. I invite you to check out either or depending on where you're seeing this video and connect with me. I would love to know that you're watching or that you're stamping or that you're out there being inspired. I'm so appreciative of you watching today. Thank you so much and until next time, happy stamping.